All right, in this section, we're going to be talking about selections, how to make a selection, how to modify selections, and exactly what a selection is. Uh, to start with selections, we're going to be introducing a couple of tools, the rectangular marquee tool, the elliptical marquee tool, underneath that, the lasso tool, and uh, the ones under that, the polygonal lasso tool and the magnetic, as well as the magic wand tool and how to use those. First, I'm going to need to open up an image. I'm going to open up the Ducky image using my file browser because it's a really good one to illustrate how to make selections. I'm going to open this up a little bit and I'm going to start with the rectangular marquee tool. To create a selection area, it's as simple as clicking on an area of your image, holding down your mouse key, or your mouse, and um, dragging out. What you see when you release is a selection area. It's like a bounding box, and you can tell this by these little dashed lines that are moving. These dashed lines in the industry are called the marching ants. Not sure why, but I guess they look like marching ants so that you can see where your boundary is. Now, once you've released your mouse, you can't go back and modify this in any way, or else you're just going to simply de deselect the selection area and start all over again, right? So everything inside the uh, little marching ants there is the selection. Everything within these boundaries is part of the selection. Now, we do have to kind of understand what is being selected. If I zoom in real close to an edge of my selection area right here using a marquee drag, you can see that what I've really whoa, got here. Whoa, one second. Okay, you did a marquee drag. Now, I remember you showing how to zoom in and zoom out by clicking in and clicking out and using the alt, but what's this marquee drag zooming thing? Let me go ahead and zoom back out again using my alt key to back out a few steps, um, or I'm just going to simply double click on my zoom tool to go straight out to okay. 100%. A nice feature of the zoom tool also is a marquee drag. If I want to zoom in just to the eyeball here, instead of clicking and clicking and clicking, I can simply click, hold, and drag, very similar to what I did with the selection, and it'll pop right to just those pixels. Very nice. To go back out, double click on the zoom tool, and I'm right back where I started. Awesome. So I'm going to use that marquee zoom trick to pop in real close to, these, uh, to the selection area here to take a look at what these boxes are. Okay, what I see here is Ducky has a real sh jaggedy edge. Take a look at real closely. We have these boxes that are filled with various shades of color. Mm -hmm. These boxes are called pixels, which is a shortened term for picture element. These are the smallest pieces of information that comprise an overall Photoshop image. It's a bitmap formula, if you're familiar with, uh, with you're familiar with that terminology. Okay. It's created on a grid or a series of these grids that house pixels. So you can see that my selection area simply divides uh, the pixels, but not in half. Your pixels are either inside the selection area or outside the selection area. There is no in-between. Okay. So when I create a selection area, I'm actually saying which pixels are inside and which pixels are outside, just so that you understand how this works. So all the pixels inside this bounding area are part of my selection, okay. right? Everything outside is not. What this means is only the pixels inside can be affected. If I want to do anything like delete by, by hitting the delete key, only the pixels got deleted that were inside the selection area. Everything out was left alone. I'm going to undo that by going up to the undo menu and choosing the undo clear, or my favorite is control Z on okay. the keyboard to bring that right back where I was. Now. I'm going to go ahead and switch, switch over to my rectangular marquee tool again and let you see that I can reposition this, this selection area if I want to by just clicking and dragging inside. I'm not bound to where it is where I released the mouse when I created it. So you're saying by clicking anywhere inside your selection area. Yes, by clicking anywhere inside, I can move it. Problem, if I try clicking outside, I'm simply deselecting the uh, selection area. The same thing can be done trying to deselect it by going up to the select menu. Again, the select menu is specific for anything we would normally do to a selection area. And as the second thing you can see here is the deselect or control D. So by clicking deselect, you've deselected your selection area. So okay. the same thing is just simply clicking outside. Okay? <clears throat> Let's talk about what we can do with the selection area. Now I'm going to switch over to the elliptical marquee tool, which is right underneath the rectangular marquee tool, or you can see the M, which is the hot key. So if I could, 
I can cycle between the rectangular and the, mar and the elliptical by simply hitting Shift and M to cycle through this. I can see that the side of Ducky is a nice curvature, which an elliptical will be pretty good at getting close to that, to that edge, so I can kind of match the curvature. But if I wanted to select all of Ducky, you can see that the elliptical tool is only going to create ellipse. I want to be able to add to the selection area to get the rest of Ducky into my selection area. If you look up here in the options for the selection tools, a lot of them have these buttons up here. If I hover over the tool tips for the first one says new selection, the second one says add to selection, third subtract, the fourth the intersect. Let me show you how those work. If I click on the Add to Selection button, it becomes highlighted. Now, my cursor has a little plus sign next to it, right? Anything I do now is simply going to add to the current selection. So as I keep making selections, they're going to add to that selection. But I don't necessarily have to have a contiguous selection area. If I was to come out here to the tail end of Ducky and make a selection, these are not contiguous, meaning they're not next to each other, but this is still considered part of the overall selection. Anything that happens with inside these bounding areas gets affected. So if I hit delete, both areas go. Okay, I'm going to undo that real quick and continue to add to my selection. Good. And I can continue doing this until I had all of Ducky. Obviously, this wouldn't be a very efficient way of doing it because I'm only using circles. This would probably be the way Gump would go about doing it, right? Absolutely. Gump's a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what I did last night. <laughs> Is it now? <laughs> Let me show you the next button here, the subtract from selection. If I click down on that, anything I do now is going to subtract from the selection. And you can see that my cursor now has a minus sign. In the exact opposite way of adding, it's just going to subtract. I think that's fairly... Um, fairly obvious. As I keep continue doing this, I'm just going to be detracting from my selection area. The next one is the intersect. This one's a little bit more confusing, so let me show you this real quick. Click on the intersect button. Now, as I drag a selection area out, only the overlapping areas are going to be what's kept. So if I release now, only the part that was overlapping is kept as a part of a selection. So let me do that a couple more times, and I'll just kind of drop this down a little bit like that. Okay. These buttons are really handy if you, if you need them, but you always have to go back and keep pressing on the new one if you want to create a new selection button. Let me show you a handy way so that you never have to touch these buttons, okay? I'm going to make sure that the new selection is, is highlighted. It's on, and all we're doing is making new selections. But if I want to add to the selection, hold down your Shift key and notice what happens to this button up here. As I hold down the shift key, it temporarily toggles on and off that add to selection. In fact, my cursor now has a plus sign next to it. So anything I do while I have my shift key held down is adding. So you're clicking and dragging while I'm holding the shift key down. You got it, Gump. Click, drag as I hold my shift key, and it will add to that selection. Now, remember there's the subtract from the selection. How would I go about doing that? There's another keyboard shortcut for that. That's the Alt key. If I hold down my Alt key, I'm toggling on and off my subtract from selection. And even notice my, so my cursor has the little minus sign next to it. As long as I have my Alt key held down, anything that I do, click, drag, is going to subtract from that selection. Cool? Gotcha. Now, the th last one. This one you might not use as much, but if you're interested, the keyboard shortcut for that is a combination of the add and the subtract. It's hold down the shift key and the alt key at the same time, and your cursor has a little X next to it. Now anything that gets overlapped is what remains in the selection area. Pretty simple stuff? Pretty simple. Okay. Why would you want to even have a selection area in the first place? We have talked about the fact that inside a bounding box, these are the only areas that will be affected. Well, what if I wanted to pull Ducky out and put him into a different image and not bring all these white pixels across? Let me go ahead and deselect this real quick, and I'm going to open up the picture of Dune using my file browser. If I was to simply drag Ducky in, and I would do that using my Move tool, I'm going to click on the Move tool and simply drag Ducky over and across to the Dune image. You can see that Ducky is in the image, but I brought all those white white pixels along with it, right? I've gone ahead and created a new layer. We'll touch on that later on, but I'm going to undo that for a second and get back to the Dune image. 
watch what happens if I select all of Ducky or even a portion of Ducky. Um, actually, I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me go ahead and, uh, and talk about the lasso tool for a few minutes, and then I'll get back to that illustration. Let me go down to the, uh, the lasso tool, and this is like making a selection with a free form, okay? What I can do is click, hold, and drag around the area that I want to make a selection, and I'm holding my mouse button down as I do this, and instead of trying to make circles and squares and whatnot, I'm giving myself the ability to do a free form. Nice? So this, this all depends on how good you are with your mouse, huh? You know what? If you have a graphics tablet, like, yeah. a, like an Intuo 2 tablet from Wacom, right. those are, uh, will, will definitely help in your precision. It's hard so, to do with a mouse. So, Gump, you're, uh, you're just out of luck on using this tool. I'll stick <laughs> with the uh, bar of soap. Yeah. But once again, you can add to a selection by holding your, your uh, shift key. You can subtract from it holding your alt key. And the same rules apply. Now, do you have to, uh, where you start your selection from, you start drawing, do you have to go all the way back to where you started it to complete your circle? Or The nice thing about it is you don't have to become too precise. If I start a selection area and I end at some other point on the screen, uh -huh. if I just simply release my mouse, Photoshop will draw the line in between. Excellent. Okay. Now, that kind of brings us up to the next tool, which is the polygonal lasso tool, underneath the lasso tool, or L. It's just like the freeform lasso tool, except in this case, it's going to create straight lines instead of letting you freeform around. This one takes a little bit of getting used to in the fact that I don't have to hold down my mouse button as I drive. Let me start this over again, deselect. I'm going to start at the top of Ducky's head by simply clicking. That starts my selection. I'm not holding down my mouse key, but I'm going to go down a little bit further on Ducky's head, click again, which creates a new point. Click, click, click. And I'll do this all the way around Ducky. Now, this Ducky, of course, is a rounded creature and not uh, very polygonal at all, so this is going to create kind of a funky uh, selection area. But this might be something I'd want to do if I was maybe going to cut out a stop sign, which has straight edges. So the polygonal tool would be great for that. Now, if I use my polygonal tool and I get close to the starting point, a little icon, my little uh, cursor icon changes and includes a little circle at the uh, lower right-hand corner. That says, okay, you're near the end or where you began. Go ahead and click, and it will close up that, that uh, selection right there. I cool. got you. Uh-huh. You know, there's another tool, and in this case would be perfect for selecting Ducky. As you've seen, I haven't gotten anywhere close to really getting all of Ducky. So I'm going to deselect this and show you the magic of the Magic Wand tool. Time uh, to do some... Okay, yes? real quick, before we get over to the Magic Wand, isn't there one more that we want to... The there was a uh, magnetic... Yeah. Magnetic yeah. lasso tool. tool. Glad you guys caught me on that because this one is perfect for Ducky. This magnetic lasso tool is fantastic in pictures that have high contrast area. Take a look at the side of Ducky and that white. That's a high contrast area. This magnetic lasso tool is going to work great. What we do for this is click somewhere near the edge and just start dragging. All I did was click one time and released my mouse, and now all I'm doing is dragging around the contour of Ducky, and it's magnetically snapping my selection area to the areas of the high contrast. Now that is doing a really good job, I'd say, at making that, is that just selection That so area. cool. Once I get back to my starting point, I get my little circle there at the, on my icon. I click and done. In two clicks, we've made a complete selection around Ducky. It's not a bad selection. No, not, not a bad at selection. All. Not a bad Very selection. Very nice. Now, do watch out for that tool. When you're using it in areas of low contrast, it will have a tendency to freak out a little bit. But uh, in high contrast areas like this, it works great. Now, let's move over to the Magic Wand tool. The Magic Wand tool, I'm going to deselect what I've got currently. Jump over to the Magic Wand tool. It's a selection tool, but it works a little bit differently. We're not dragging out a selection area. We're letting the tool do the work for us. When I click down on an area of a certain color, what the Magic Wand tool does is it looks at that particular pixel and says, okay, you're my starting point. Then it radiates outward from that pixel to all other outlining pixels and says, are you within the same color value as, as I am? And if you are, 
you're going to be inside my selection area. Watch what happens when I click on the beak. The pixel that I clicked on was red. And so as it radiated outward, it grabbed all the other pixels next to it that were the same color red. But So real quick, um, if you grab the move tool and move that, what is it? It's actually, remember, only the pixels inside a selection uh -huh. area is going to be affected. Let's just see so how much I of that move, beak got grabbed. Look how the, my cursor changes to a little scissors icon. This means it's going to cut those pixels out, and we can move them around the screen if we want to. You so you can see bit. how much of that beak actually got selected and which parts didn't. You can see that there are a couple pixels that got left. I'm going to put that beak back where it was and explain the difference of the tolerance because this is going to be a factor when using the magic wand tool. Gotcha. If I set the tolerance of the magic wand down to maybe a 15 and redid my selection area, I'm going to drop that even lower, maybe a 5, so I can really see the difference. And click. Boy, I'm having a hard time with that, that tolerance tool. Down to maybe 2 and select some place. We're having trouble. <laughs> Maybe shouldn't. bump it up to uh, 50 or so and see if you can't get the entire beak selected. 50 will just about will just about select the entire beak. So more or less the higher the number, the more... The more that's going to be incorporated into your selection area. And I the gotcha. lower the number is supposed to be, you choose a lower amount or a smaller amount for your selection area. This area down here, this dark area, is actually a better example since most of this is a, a value of the same color red. This might be a, a better example. Choosing a lower tolerance down here versus choosing a higher tolerance down here and trying it over again, you can see how much more is actually into that tolerance level. Good? Very cool. All right. Deselect that. Moving right along. Let's talk about the, uh, the rectangular marquee tool. There might be times when you need to have a selection that's constrained to a square, or if you're using the elliptical tool, having a, con a selection area that's constrained to a circle. You can do this in two different ways that I know of. You can change the style to a fixed aspect ratio, and you can change the width and the height to be constrain that to a width and height of one by one. You can change the height maybe to, let's say, 2. Now any selection area you create is going to have that same ratio. You can do nearly the same thing by holding down your Shift key when you create the selection in the first place, change it back to a style of normal, hold down the Shift, and you'll constrain to a ratio of 1 by 1. You can see that as I'm dragging, holding my Shift, it's going to be a square. So that gives you a perfect square. Can you do the same thing with the ellipse same tool? Same thing can be done with the ellipse tool by holding down the shift. As I create, I'm going to constrain to a perfect circle. Cool? But once again, why would we want to have a selection in the first place? Like I was mentioning earlier, if we wanted to take Ducky out of this image but not have the white pixels and bring him into the dune with just the pixels that comprise Ducky, making a selection would be extremely necessary. I'm going to use that magic wand tool to illustrate another point called inverse. What if you had, uh, if you wanted to set a certain size for the particular selection, if you knew the exact size that you wanted, could Instead you do Instead of that? doing a, a, a constrained ratio set right. a particular size? Sure, Gump, watch this. If I come back over to my rectangular marquee tool, go up to the style menu, and come down to fixed size underneath aspect ratio, we can set the width and the height, in this case pixels. We can also change those to inches. Now, anything we click is going to create a selection area of exactly 40 pixels by 40 pixels, and we can change these as we want. Gotcha. Pretty so, nice. Yeah, it's a great way of doing that. Um, You're not limited to just pixels, are you? Nope. If I want to change this to one inch, I'm going to try to keep it small so we can see it inside our, our image plane here, and change this to one inch. So we got one inch by one inch. Now I've created a selection area that's exactly one by one. Very Same nice. thing, change it to two by two, or in any Ratio that so the want. pixels was px and the inches was just in. Correct, and you can gotcha. change that by by uh, typing px or in in that little field there. So I'm going to change that back to the normal state, deselect that, and introduce you to the concept of inverse. 
Now, remember how that magic wand tool works. Everything within its tolerance area is going to be selected until it comes up to an area that's not within its range, and then those, uh, those pixels are not going to be included. With a tolerance of high, uh, 50, I'm going to drop this back to 35 just to see what kind of res uh, effect we get. And I'm going to click on the white area here. See how the white area around Ducky has completely been added to a selection area. But notice that there's actually some pixels inside Ducky that were added as well. The reason that happened is because this button up here that says contiguous was turned off. I'm going to turn that contiguous button on and deselect and reselect again. And this time, what Photoshop does is hunts out pixels that are only next to each other when, when uh, looking for tolerance. Or you could have just dropped your tolerance down to zero, and it would have pretty much done the same thing? Well, might not have. If these pixels over here, the whitest part of the eye, were within the same value range as these white, it still would have happened the same way. But turning the contiguous on, make sure that it doesn't happen, and we can stay safe with those selection areas. As long as uh, Ducky doesn't uh, come across, the, the yellow doesn't come across to the edge of the picture, right? Right. As long right. as those white pixels are... Actually throughout. contiguous, meaning next gotcha. to each other. And as you can see, we've got, a we've got little gaps here that Photoshop goes through, and the magic wand tool says, yep, they're all contiguous. They're all added to the selection. But now I have my selection area outside of Ducky, but I really want Ducky to be in my selection. How would I go about changing from out to in and basically deselect what's already selected, selecting what is selected? You could... Um Maybe use the uh, magnetic tool or the lasso tool. We could have used that magnetic tool like we did before. Tool. But a new concept that I'd like to illustrate is the idea of inversing a selection. If I could go up to the select menu for a second and to talk about the fourth one here, the inverse or shift control I simply takes what's selected and reverses it with what's not selected. Inverse. Now you can see that Ducky is inside the selection area, and the outside is no longer selected. Now everything inside the, the selection area can be modified. Let me illustrate how that works with this Dune image. If I simply move Ducky over, he's now inside the Dune. How did I know you dune. were going to put a poor Ducky in the desert? Duck in the desert. Duck in the desert. There you go. But the point is you have no white spaces. So hopefully that illustrates the importance of actually making a selection area. You'll spend actually a lot of time making good selections, so it's important to know why you're actually doing it. Anything else we need to discuss in the selection section? Um, yeah, actually one more thing would be good, and that's when doing doing selections, there are times that you will need to transform them, right? Great. Let's talk about transforming a selection. Okay. Okay, so you might need to transform a selection every once in a while. Let's say, and in this case, I'm going to make a elliptical selection area, but you notice that it's very vertical. It's not, uh, we, have, we can't really get that into a diagonal. Let's say we could try, but we're going to have this vertical or horizontal, but not really diagonal. There might be times when you need to make your selection area diagonal, and you can't do that with the tool as it is. But you can transform that selection. Let's go up to the Select menu again. We're going to come down to the Transform Selection. When you click on this, what you see is you have kind of a bounding box around your selection area with these transform handles in the middle. Selecting these transform handles and dragging will actually transform as far as scale of your selection. Clicking on the corners will do two at one time. You can stretch, drag, uh, scale in, scale out. So if I wanted to maybe put my selection area around the edge of Ducky, I can see that I can make my selection area larger, but that still keeps things very vertical. How do I rotate around? Yeah, you can rotate with the transform selection as well. Let's try this. Moving your cursor outside the bounding box area will give you these two double arrows. Click, hold, and drag will rotate that bounding box, thus transforming your selection area. Once again, I can still move my selection area around the screen to reposition it, like up against the side of Ducky here. 
throw that out a little bit more and keep repositioning until my heart's content and rotating as I need. Now, this little cursor in the middle, I'm going to shrink this down just a little bit. This little cursor in the middle is called the pivot point. Normally, you wouldn't need to change the pivot point for, uh, for doing the transform of a selection, but let me just show you what it is anyway. As we rotate around, we're rotating around this pivot point. If I click, hold, and drag this pivot point outside the bounding box, now if I try to rotate, I'm going to be rotating around that pivot point. Cool? Gotcha. Now I can easily put that pivot point back into where it belongs by clicking and dragging. Photoshop knows where the middle of that selection area is, so it has a tendency to snap right to the middle so you don't have to worry about accidentally misplacing it, and you just rotate as normal. When you're done with your transforming of the selection, you simply double-click or hit Enter on your keyboard, and that will take effect. Ooh, so I hit Enter keyboard. on the keyboard. The transform selection is done, and I think we've discussed everything you need to know about making good, clean selections. I think so. I'm happy with it. Gump, looks pretty good. All right. Well, that does it for this section.